So everyone has been asking me, how did you get to learn your Pakistani slash Indian cooking? How did you know what kind of spices you're supposed to use in certain dishes? So today's subject is spices. Well guys, I'm gonna share a secret with you. It was never easy for me. I started off two years ago, as you all know, my obsession with cooking Pakistani and Indian food has gone beyond limits. Okay, so for that one very reason, I've been traveling to Pakistan the last few years, one too many times to exactly learn the ABC, the, the structure, the fundamentals of cooking Pakistani food and the spices, how to use them and what spices belong where and in what dish. Now I'm going to share a secret with you guys. It was never easy. So I started off with these. These are instant spices for a specific dish you want to cook. There are a few Pakistani brands, very well-known brands. One is Sean, the other one is called Mehran, and an Indian brand called National. Now, let me remind you one thing, guys. This is a perfect solution and way as a start. So, for all you first timers, if it's your first time cooking Pakistani food or Indian food, I would strongly recommend that you start off with these instant spices. The beauty about these instant spices are that you could find the exact dish that you're looking into cooking. For example, if you want to cook butter chicken, they have it. You want to learn how to cook beef curry, they'll have it. In the back side, it will show all these instructions, cooking instructions, basically how to cook it. They have all the ingredients mentioned right here on the other side and the nutritional facts. So it makes life a lot easier by using these to begin with. So this is actually a great way to learn how to cook Pakistani food. And it took me a while to practice and I'll share another secret with you guys. This is a perfect way for you to read the ingredients and this way you will know exactly what spices and herbs are used to cook that one particular dish. Because not every spice and herb belongs in every dish. There are certain spices that are definitely a no-no in cooking and then there are some that are a must and if you forget those your recipe is pretty much incomplete so this is what these spices help me do is basically learn the abc of what spices and herbs belong in that one particular dish so for all you starters out there I would strongly recommend for you to start off with these instant spices to start cooking your food. Now, remember guys, you don't want to continue on sticking to these. They are very convenient, don't get me wrong, especially when you have get-togethers, you have parties, you don't have the time, you're just restricted with time. It's great. But as you keep on getting better at your spices, then obviously I would recommend for you to start using your fresh spices and grind them in your own homes and use them in your cooking. So it is very essential that you eventually use and learn how to use your home spices, fresh home spices. Because to be frank with you, at the end of the day, you don't really know exactly how much of these ingredients are 100% pure or not. And the other thing I've realized is these particular spices are a little bit high on sodium because there's a lot of salt that is used in these. So me being someone who does not consume a lot of salt, uh, sometimes find it a bit too overwhelming to use these spices. So I always tend to mix half a box of this plus my own home spices. So that's one of the reasons I've learned 
and travel to Pakistan to understand how to use spices and why those certain spices. So the main essential spices for any good Pakistani or Indian cooking is are your main fundamental spices. One which is turmeric. These are the essential ones that I'm talking about. Then you have your cumin. Cumin is a spice that literally, literally is used in almost every cooking in Pakistan or India. Then you have mustard seed. Indians pretty much use mustard seeds in a lot of their cooking. Pakistani cooking on the other hand, barely. They barely ever use this particular spice right over here. It's barely ever used in their cooking. Second one is you have uh, your fennel. Fennel is also another very popular spice uh, used uh, in entire Asia itself. Uh, they are used in desserts, they are used in cooking, as far as stew, hearty, hearty curries. Uh, they use it pretty much either you could use it in a powder form or you could even use it as a whole when you are boiling and cooking your stews. Uh, one of uh, my favorite and a very popular uh, spice is the green cardamom. Green cardamom is extremely one of the most well respected uh, spices um, in, in Pakistan, India, overall in the entire Asia. It's also one of the most expensive uh, spices when it comes to selling it uh, by the weight. Um, it's very versatile again. Um, the, the aroma and, the, and the, the, the texture and the flavor remains intact if you leave it inside the pot. But once it's outside the pod, uh, the lifespan is quite short on it. So I recommend you to leave it in the pods and not use them until you want to actually cook it. You just uh, squeeze it a little bit, crack it and pour it in your food or your dessert or baking, whatever it is you choose it for. So in, in Pakistan and India, they're used uh, a lot in uh, um, desserts. They make a lot of desserts out of it which is why the Pakistani desserts are extremely aromatic uh, such as their rice pudding. Uh, it's very popular when it comes to rice pudding using uh, green cardamom and rice pudding. And of course then we know our biryani rice in India and Pakistan. Uh, these are very much favored when it comes to putting it and cooking your biryani rice. It, it, just, it just gives the rice an amazing, amazing aroma. So bottom line here guys is that this is no doubt the perfect way to learn as a beginner how to cook Pakistani or Indian cuisines is to always start with these instant recipes, uh, spices. Um, why? Because the instructions are perfectly back here as far as how to cook it, the ingredients of the, the, the spices and herbs are all mentioned over here. Uh, the nutritional facts are over here. So for all you people who are not aware of your Indian and Pakistani spices, you have to start from somewhere and always start from the bottom. So this is how I started off. I was going through YouTube videos to learn how to cook Pakistani cuisine. And uh, I made sure I had one of these uh, boxes right next to me. So I followed the instruction steps by, step by step and um, voila, got myself a perfect meal. So uh, chicken tikka over here uh, is one of my favorite, favorite uh, instant spices over here. Um, just not too long ago, I cooked one of my uh, tandoori chicken tikka uh, videos, uh, recipe, and if you could see, I used one of these in my, in my, in my videos, in my recipes. I used 50% of this, and 50% I mix my own spices. So I have a combination of both and I'm going to be very frank with you. I never barbecue my chicken tikka or tandoori chicken without mixing some of this. It just gives that, gives my chicken, my barbecue that authenticness, that flavor that I'm looking for. So you have to use this in order to know exactly what I'm talking about. So. So, like I said, some of my there there are a lot of brands out there, guys. Don't get me wrong, there are lots and lots of brands. 
uh, but if, if it's the Pakistani flavor you're going through then you have to stick to the Pakistani brands which is such as Sean, you have um, uh, uh, Mehran, you have um, uh, Ahmed Masala. Um, so yes, uh, these are the Pakistani ones and the most famous Indian uh, spice brand which is uh, very close to the Pakistani one is National. So it all depends which texture, which flavor you're going after. So said that guys, um, it all comes down to yes, these are great, great substitutes uh, to not only use them as a beginner, as a learner, but also when you are in a rush, uh, you have a banquet going, a large family get together for dinner or lunch, these are extremely convenient they're very cheap um, a box might cost you somewhere around a dollar um, or a dollar and a half uh, you'll find them at all your Indian uh, Pakistani grocery stores when I was in California and San Diego they were very very easy to find in any Middle Eastern uh, convenience store so yes these are very easy to get a hold of and uh, with today's uh, technology and progress uh, you could purchase them on online and they'll have it delivered at your doorsteps so I think I pretty much covered everything all the basics over here when it comes to Indian and Pakistani spices for all you beginners out there I do not want to overwhelm you with too much information so I think this would be enough if you guys really enjoy watching this video or my previous other videos please press this red button subscribe down here do leave your comments. Please share the video with your friends and loved ones to show your love and support. Until next time, peace out.